I mean, I'm knackered. <laughs> You're always knackered at the moment, Wink. Um, I'm out of sync. So, if my thoughts aren't coherent for this episode, I can only apologise. It's not really a really good way to start the episode with explaining why this episode is going to be so shy. Well, hang on. Well, I didn't use those words. You use those words. But I am... Um, you can probably tell from my demeanour. I'm just like... I tried to do all the lighting I could to get Wayne to look half decent, but Mate. I might be able to fix it in post. <laughs> <laughs> just need a good makeup artist. That's what we need. That'll look great. <laughs> or just a mask. <laughs> <laughs> okay, wow. Halloween, I was talking about. Oh, yeah, obviously. There you go. Halloween. Coming up soon. Yeah. In fact, I think Halloween is the weekend this episode is going out. No. No, I'm pretty sure it is. Have we got one for this week? Yeah, and this weekend's 21st. Oh, maybe it is then. The there day of go. recording, this weekend's 21st because my mum's birthday. It's the following week's got to be Halloween weekend. There you go, perfectly synced again. Yeah, I mean, if only we'd planned it, right? <laughs> <laughs> that happens too often, isn't it? <laughs> um, so, today, we're talking about being a weirdo. <laughs> Which is perfectly done. <laughs> For seen, Halloween. <laughs> seen as you have two weirdos you're listening to. Yeah, right. So, no, specifically we're talking about kind of taking advantage of, you know, not being... Your eccentricities. Normal. Yeah, your, yeah, your eccentricities, your kind of the aspects of your personality that sometimes people are like, that's different. Or you kind of like keep to yourself because you're a bit like, if everybody knew hermit. that I'm into these kind of things and I'm not talking those kind of things, but some kind of things, and that's okay <laughs> sometimes. <laughs> Well, let's keep the show clean if we can, though. Right? Yes. But yes, you are totally right. The things that you sometimes kind of keep behind closed doors, um, the things that you don't reveal to the world, and how you can kind of leverage those, I suppose, is probably the right way to... Yeah, I think so. ...to kind of look at it. So, Gemma, are you a weirdo? I think we're all weirdos in some ways, I think. Nice answer. Nice. Did you like that? Did you I like did. That, so that wasn't planned. <laughs> No, I do think we're all weirdos in our own ways, and I think that's what makes us all, like, unique human beings. They say that, like, Mm -hmm. all right, we might look, we're all human beings, we've got bodies and whatever else, but Mm -hmm. I think it's actually our experiences that make us into a unique person. Uh And I think that's kind of your experiences, but also the weird things you get up to, Mm -hmm. whether that's being passionate about. For me, like, I really love psychology. That's a slightly weird trait to really, like, love reading all about the mind. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm a bit excessive about fitness and health, and I love reading about that. A bit excessive. Mm. Just a bit. <laughs> but that's what I mean. So those sort of things, and I think, like, those sort of weird behaviours that other mm-hmm. people look at and go, God, that's a bit extreme, which mm-hmm. you get a lot of people saying a lot of the time. I think they're the things that actually build you into who you are, and I think a lot of the time going deep into something is often where you're going to find, like, Either the most growth or you're going to see opportunities as well. Yeah, I was going to say, it's, it's about the opportunities, I think, that arise because <clears throat> it's those weird things, but by, by almost by definition, because they're weird, it means that basically not everybody has those qualities or at least publicly has those qualities. Um, and so that means just on that basis, you've essentially got a USP, <laughs> unique selling point, um, because... Again, not everybody, it doesn't fit into the mainstream. Mm-hmm. Um, like, in a way, like, being a bit of a geek now is like, it's a non-issue. It's now become cool to yeah. be a bit of a geek. Yeah, like, everybody's a bit of a geek now, in but, some way. Whereas, like, in the 90s, you would never, like, yeah, publicly yeah. go out and be like, yeah, I'm a freaking geek. Now you've got... You get a beat down for being a geek. Yeah, down. now you've got these jocks walking around with vest tops with, ooh, with geek written across the front. I'm like, screw you. Wednesday. I'm a true geek. I've been geek since school. I'm, I'm, and I, and an, I'm got, an OT geek. And I got the beat downs. <laughs> <laughs> no, I kept, the, I kept the geek. Well, actually, yeah. no, I didn't keep the geek behind closed doors. I thought I did, but I didn't. It's on show. It was well, very much on show. Um, but yeah, and so things like that. So so the, now being a geek isn't such a big thing now, I suppose, is like a good example. And like in the same way of being like good with computers isn't quite so geeky now because we've all got computers everywhere we go. So it's like, oh, you just... Know a little bit more about computers. Yeah, and I think as well that, like, um, I read somewhere, it's kind of like the weirdo now has the availability to find their own kind of weird tribe online. And mm. I think it's like, once someone's revealed that they are into this kind of thing, then suddenly everybody knows where to go to all be there together. And I uh-huh. think because you've seen, like you say, on social media, if everyone's like, oh, I'm reading comic books, and then someone's like, yeah, yeah, me too, I've just got this. I think it becomes more acceptable. You find your people yeah, very, exactly. very easily. You're not like, having to go, do you like, wait, do you? 
<laughs> you don't have to like do have you, a little do you special. Do, do you do it too? <laughs> you don't have to have like a special hand signal or a little badge <laughs> that you wear to show that you're into those things. But yeah. maybe now you can just find like a group on Facebook or a meetup group who are like yeah. want to sit down and talk about those things. But mm-hmm. yeah, I think that's kind of made it more acceptable. Yeah, and I think because of that, in a way, it's also uh, yeah. I guess I suppose it's kind of what you were saying actually. Kind of just people are much more open about their kind of slightly more for want of a better phrase weird things that they're into because mm. wasn't it didn't you bring up on an episode months ago about the people that collect the stickers off fruit oh yeah yeah and there's a there's a facebook group is it yeah, a facebook yeah, group like a massive facebook group i mean if if there's a massive a ma- do you say massive i think so <laughs> we're talking thousands of people here not like not tens no, thousands. of people no i think it's tens of thousands tens but, of thousands yeah. right so if you can find a group of tens of thousands of people online that are into collecting stickers off of fruit. Now, I'm not judging, but that is niche, right? <laughs> that is niche. If you can find that, I'm pretty sure any weird ticks you've got, mm-hmm. you're going to... I don't like the fact we're using this word weird. I think weird is loaded, so it makes you yeah. feel like it's a negative When thing. we say weird, yeah. The yeah. thing is, you've got like the polarity. You've got If you're either normal or you're weird, and I think it's But then of... what is normal, Jen? Technology let us down. Technology, you just said, hey... You guys are talking about normal. You're letting the weirdos out there. We're not allowing that. Let's switch this <laughs> off now. So, so, so the, the question, question I asked yes, before we were rudely really interrupted by technology. An apple. Mac. Ooh. Just, just saying. I mean, just, just saying, saying, not my Mac. Yes. Yours um, wouldn't do that. Mine wouldn't do that. Okay. Uh, <laughs> um, yeah, so, so what is normal? Um, I was saying, before we were rudely interrupted, I think there's like... You've got, like, the normal, and then you've got weirdo. And I think, in some ways, everyone thinks, like, normal is a safe place to be. Mm-hmm. But at the same time, everybody is ultimately a weirdo. Not in a kind of, like, uh-huh. like we said, weirdo is very, like, um, loaded word to have. It means mm-hmm. if you're a weirdo, you do things that are, like, not socially normal, mm-hmm. and therefore people can judge you. and You don't conform. Yeah, exactly. But then at the same time, our biology, and actually the way we are psychologically, is, like, we actually don't want to be normal. It's like everybody avoids being normal, which is why all marketing kind of tries to define you as being different uh-huh. in some way, yet we're all different uh-huh. in the same way, which is kind of... Well, like that's why you always end up with these, like, uh, fashion subcultures. Like, the you got, like, back in the day, the it was the chavs yeah. versus the rockers, and you had, everybody was chavvy, and then there were the rockers that were like, well, no, we're not, we don't like these things that we're having to conform to, so then the rocker thing picks up, and then suddenly that builds up so much more rent, and then everybody becomes a rocker, and then it's like, well, hang on, we're going to be emo now, because this rocker thing, we want to really... And then and it just kind of spirals, and then, then the hipsters. Hipsters, that's been a long... Who's, who's entire, their, their entire thing is, we're not conforming. And then by not all not conforming, they're conforming to fashionable, and yeah, suddenly they're all conforming. <laughs> yeah, I was hipster before it was cool. What yeah. just had a beard, or yeah, I did have a beard before it was cool, actually. Well done. But um, <laughs> the, what was the point on that one? I guess it was about normality and yeah. and and why, like, what is normal and and why do we why are we constantly trying to conform and also the fact that as you were saying exactly, from a yeah. human perspective we actually yeah. don't want to conform it's kind of like a boat isn't it it's kind of like you want to conform because you want to fit in at the same time you want to be different enough that you're unique and so right it's that, that constant battle, battle isn't it yeah. it's like yeah you want to fit in so people don't judge you but at the same time you don't want to fit in so much that people don't notice you oh i like that that's going to be a quote right there but you kind of reword yeah. mine to make it sound better. That's not fair. Well, That's you need to be more eloquent. Oh, there you go. <laughs> Sorry about that. Sounds better coming from your voice. Thank, thanks, mate. <laughs> thanks, thanks. Um, yeah, so oh, I, had a, I had a really good thought that just lost just on, the, on you stroking my ego there. Oh, sorry about that. Um, <laughs> that usually takes your attention away. You yeah, know. I know. I just can't think about anything else about how, other than how good I am. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Um, no, uh, no, it's gone. But I think if you look at any sort of um, successful person, I mm-hmm. think they have pursued part of their weirdness to an extreme. And I right. think I always have this debate as well with people. It's kind of like 
people say like anything extreme is not good for you. Like you should do things in like in like moderate ways. Like if you're gonna do something, mm. don't do it all the way. And I kind of like have a battle. I think there's another juxtaposition in that as well. It's kind yeah. of like do you do something just enough just so you're doing it or do you do it like all the way to the point that usually it's people who kind of have extreme behaviour in some way that actually get to the kind of pinnacle of that thing. Yeah. If you get what I mean. Yeah, I know. Because I actually had the same thought um, to bring up later in the episode, but... Um, but and going you, But we're going there now. Um, the, if you behave... If you do everything in moderation, you'll never become anything but moderate. Ooh. And in the same way that, and I kind of f- feel this way about um, mainstream media, and I've said this for years, like, I'm very particular about the things that I like. If I like something, I really like it. And I feel like mainstream media, for example, because it's trying to cater to the masses, it's trying to cater to as many people as possible, mainstream media, on that logic, could never become anything more than mediocre. Mm-hmm. And then the ama- the, there'll be the amazing thing every now and then that will become mainstream because it was so amazing. But on the whole, it kind of flattens out. It will only ever be mediocre because it's trying to appeal to the most amount of people at any one time. Mm-hmm. And I feel like, in terms of your behaviour and the way that you kind of put yourself out there, I feel like it's the same kind of thing. If you don't take the bold risk and if you don't try to maximise the things the way you don't necessarily fit in and, and don't make yourself stand out then you're only ever going to become mediocre and moderate or go the other way and actually people are like, oh, well. Because what if, what if, right, what if you try and fit in, but you're so shit at fitting in, you just, you don't, you don't, don't even make it to mediocre or moderate, you're just shit. Because you're not, you're not maximising your, you're not maximising your strengths and you're trying to kind of work, let the weaknesses which everybody else kind of like agrees with. It's kind of like the, the, the geek at school that, kind of wants to fit in with all the cool kids but they haven't got a cool bone in their body <laughs> in yeah. terms of a generic yeah bone. and so they're they're the bottom of the of the pack of the food chain if you will because they don't have the strength to fit in with that crowd and actually if they move to a different crowd and leverage the fact that they don't they're not cool they could actually be like the popular one so rather than group. like trying to be the guy who plays football and tries to play football with the cool dudes hey yeah, actually right. he's really good at say computers or right. art and then if right. in that crowd he's already which is why I don't play football <laughs> good plan because <laughs> I know I'm shit at it <laughs> True. but yeah and I, I think there's I think that we're, we're so particular actually I think this really does apply to school kids actually so if you've got kids being bullied at school this is the episode Although, maybe too much language, but never mind. Explicit, explicit warning. Um, but yeah, um, and, and I think we're, we're in this position so much, we're just trying to fit in that actually we're doing ourselves a disservice. Yeah, like I, think, trying to fit I think it makes sense as well, like nowadays, the, the challenge of whether it's the economy, whether it's work, whether it's whatever you want to do, I think actually, I think we need more people who are weird in that sense, that mm. go into extremes in their behaviour, because I think now there's too much competition within the like, mediocre or the same. Or, yeah. And I think people are realising that, which is why I think internet's come at the right time because it's like, allowing people to embrace Niche. those niches. Yeah. Which is why actually now, like you say, you've got all kinds of people on Instagram. And like, it's funny how many different niches you can see of people who have built their businesses on sharing a particular thing on Instagram. Mm-hmm. Where it's like, uh, I don't know, like for example, in the fitness industry, you've got either women bodybuilders, men bodybuilders, and you've got people who are about, like, um, sort of, like, empowerment for people who are bigger sizes. Right. And then you've got uh, all kinds of, like, different niches in there, and they've all found little tribes here and there. Mm-hmm. But then, I guess, like we spoke about before, then, is that it's not obviously a can when we want to open, but it's kind of like, once the weirdos find each other, they kind of stick together, mm-hmm. and then it's wondering whether then you don't ever allow it to see other perspectives in terms of... Yeah, yeah I suppose there's, a, there's that danger of, if you go into extreme behaviour um, and you kind of close yourself off because you, you invest so much in that and you surround yourself with so many like-minded people. Yeah, that you then close yourself off from ever learning from, new ideas, which is yeah. why I think it is a kind of balancing act. Mm. You're going to be the weirdo, you still need... It's kind of like, it's, all, it's the game. It's kind of like, you'd be weird in your own way, but you're still connected to what the bigger yeah. world or the picture of what's going actually on, rather yeah, yeah. than... 
before you'd be weird in your own corner, but now you'd be weird, but you can still apply it to the bigger, the grand scheme of things rather than yeah. kind of using it as a way to go deeper into your own little hole, but bring a couple more people in with you. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I guess. And I think that's where the opportunity lies, is if you can you can cultivate your weirdness, Yeah. which is the title of the episode, huh? Uh, <laughs> cultivate your weirdness, but in a way that fits in with the it's kind of like you're just like putting that extra cog in the machine that maybe there wasn't necessarily a place for that cog it didn't need it but actually just by popping it in mm-hmm. you make the machine work quicker yeah it's kind of like with uh, it makes it more like efficient with tesla and elon musk it's like oh what if cars drove themselves or something like that mm-hmm. and how does that that's weird to think you know i wonder if that's possible mm-hmm. but at the same time then you've now put that into the site and it works with the current way of mm-hmm. things, doing things in a better way yeah so it's kind of yeah, I guess that's a sort of example of... Making um, it all mesh. <laughs> <laughs> and on that note, I think we should probably take, take a break. break. <laughs> uh, so we'll be back in just a moment. So we thought we'd just take a few seconds just to say thank you to our sponsor, yep. the University of Northampton. Huge thank you to them for supporting the show. Um, so why should you check them out? Well, first of all, we're we alumni. Went there. We yes. went there. So everything that we kind of delivered to you it kind of comes from them in a way. Um, but also, they're not just about getting a degree. The thing we love about Northampton Uni from experience is the fact that you've come out of your course with your degree, but also there's so many options on the table. They understand that it's not just about going out and getting a job anymore. It's also about the possibility of setting up your own business and becoming an entrepreneur. And to top that off, <laughs> it's not just about setting up a business. It's about setting up a social enterprise. That's their specialist area. So if you're thinking of setting up a business, it can also be one that's doing good to the world and delivering social impact. So check them out, northampton.ac.uk. And a huge thank you to them for supporting the show. We have returned. We're back. Um, so we're talking about weirdness. Yes. And we're talking about why you should maximise your weirdness. Um, weirdness in a loving term, as a, as a term of endearment. Empowerment. Empowerment, yeah. Rather than just being like some... Why are you weird, man? Yeah. Um, so, People say we're weird for doing the podcast as well. People think it's a bit weird. Yeah, do you know what? I, st- I still haven't quite got to the point where I'm like, this is yeah, normal. I do a podcast. I haven't quite like... I haven't quite got to the point where I'm just, I'll just throw that out into conversation. But maybe that's because, like we were saying before in the earlier part, that because not a lot of people know about podcasts, it's that's still what on it the is. outskirts. So that's what it is. It's a bit Because then I don't behavior. want to be in the position where everybody's going, what's a podcast? And they're like, so basically it's like, and then they're like, so what's your podcast about? And then it's like, Ugh. yeah, it's weary. Yeah, and plus it is <laughs> and I'm weird, weird in today. the sense I'm that talking. we kind of just get into a room and then just talk at a camera about things yeah. that we don't particularly, we're not ex- experts on, but it's like, hmm, let's just mull over some yeah. ideas and see what happens. And yet, here we are. A hundred and something episodes and later. And it has provided us with plenty of opportunities, so case in point, I suppose. Embrace the weirdo. Embrace the weirdo. So that's our episode, guys, I'll see you <laughs> later. Um, no, so I, I think that a good point to kind of segue into from there Mm -hmm. the fact that I'm kind of not at the point where I'm like wanting to I'm not feeling comfortable is like this idea of like you might embrace it or you might want to embrace it but then there's always that kind of resistance of kind of like is this a good idea do I want to do I want to put this out there and then you kind of that like what we were saying at the beginning of the episode you kind of keep it behind closed doors and you don't fear of judgment yeah, yeah, and, and and kind of how that can not be in your favour. Okay, yeah, you're not conforming, but then it will have other negative effects, um, such as um, I think you were saying about uh, kind of starting to resent your life decisions and mm-hmm. things like that. Yeah, I think a lot of the time if people hide the weird, as I said before, like the weird thing is your personality. That's kind of who makes you you. And I think a lot of the time people may have like, Again, we're just backing up. The word weird just more, more means kind of like your uniqueness in the things that you do. Mm-hmm. So you have an interest in something. A lot of time people kind of put that on the back burner to kind of fit in to do the things that everybody, the day-to-day that everybody expects of you. And I think sometimes when you stop doing those little weird things that maybe bring you joy, whether that's just walking in the forest or creating some, I don't know, 
your own little key rings here or there. Whatever you kind of enjoy doing, people sometimes just say, no, none of that doesn't mm-hmm. fit in, not going to do that. And I think sometimes that causes a lot of like destructive behaviour in the sense that you're kind of not doing a thing that brings you joy. Mm-hmm. I think a lot of the time you kind of, I don't know, you get resentful because you feel that, again, it comes back to the judgment. It's in the same way that if someone said to you or you felt heavily that you're being judged for doing a podcast, it might cause you to not do it. And because of that, you're quite hateful for people for having that judgment on you, which may right. be like a total judgment that you're just perceiving that doesn't actually exist. It's yeah. kind of going yeah, back to likely. the pleasing the invid- invisible crowd because no one's actually thinking that way about you. Mm-hmm. But because of that, you're not doing the thing you want to do. Yeah. And that's why you kind of like tap into these like other people that actually do enjoy doing those things. It's like once you've got a community of Instagrammers together, they all big each other up and do more. Yeah. If you get a group of fitness fanatics, they train more. It's kind of like that's why people get so empowered when they find that little tribe because it does yeah. make them continue doing what they want to do. Whereas I think a lot of the time people are surrounded by people who aren't in that sort of weird category with you. And so you get resentful because you're like, wow, these guys don't do anything. That they they don't get me. Yeah. They don't get me. I'm so misunderstood. So I'm just going to like eat to make myself happy or yeah. find other ways to kind of feel that joy. Because and if it's, of... if it's work, you're not turning up, you're not showing up properly, yeah. um, which means you're not getting that promotion, which means, Heart lasting, yeah, yeah. And, and you feel unfulfilled and then that leaks into your relationships and your diet and... And your alcohol consumption and the what you spend money on, the retail therapy and all that. And so it just ends up with this knock on effect just because you're not you're not being authentic to yourself. Mm-hmm. You're kind of you're you're not being who you are in the hopes that people will appreciate you even more for it. Yeah, and I think that's it. Most people are just afraid. Yeah, they're they're really afraid of actually showing up as they are. And I mm-hmm. think that's why yeah, yeah, why people don't end up embracing that weird side of themselves. Like, over time, I think it comes with a lot of maturity because I know there's aspects of my being that um, I would hide in terms of, like, being so obsessed about fitness and mm-hmm. learning and all these sort of things. And now I think people kind of understand uh, me or my friends kind of say, oh, Jem does, like, the extreme, some sort of extreme behaviours, but it's kind of, oh, that's Jem. He just yeah. does those stupid things or he go tries those new things or he gets excited by shiny objects. And it's kind of... <laughs> yeah. People get to know that and actually it's quite nice when you can realise that actually your friends kind of see a new side to you that you've been hiding because you were young and you were kind of afraid to put that out yeah. there. And then... It's actually funny actually in, in, in a way that you were saying that like because I'm so out there an Apple fanboy. Yeah. Uh, somebody popped up on my messages the other day being like, so uh, I've got an interview to work for Apple and uh, I just assumed that at some point you must have had an interview with Apple because you love them so much. Have you got any tips? I was like... like <laughs> you know me far too well. Yes, I have had an interview with Apple, but I have signed an NDA, so I can't really tell you about it. No. Um, <laughs> although I did have to sign an NDA. Maybe I shouldn't have told that. Maybe I shouldn't decl- disclose the fact that I've you told somebody told about. somebody that I can't disclose. <laughs> Paradox there. <laughs> anyway, but yeah, and I think it's that same thing because then people come to you for a particular piece of advice or a particular piece of knowledge or basically they come to you for value in that particular. And you might even find that you, you you show your weirdness and then you realise right the friends that were close to me are actually just as weird as me and they believe the same yeah. things and actually we connect now on a deeper level. Yeah. We both believe these things. It's just initially we were a bit afraid to put it out there. Mm-hmm which is also another sort of relationship building thing. But I do think that a lot of that comes with maturity and kind of, I think the older you get, the less fucks you give. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. So I've just thought of a meme that I posted yesterday, which I loved. Um, but yeah, the thing... Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. The one you're talking about, <laughs> the, the Harry, Harry Potter, Potter one, one. yeah. <laughs> uh, we, won't, we won't talk about that on here because people no. won't get it. Yeah. Um, but anyway. Um, but I think the thing I think the thing to really realize is that it's that weirdness that's ultimately your biggest value, your biggest contribution. Your superpower. Yeah, your superpower. So, I'm Apple ma- Apple man. <laughs> Hope that gets you far. I'm Apple man. <laughs> yeah, good man. Oh, you're just like bought into an the apple. A, an apple man a day keeps the doctor. Oh, you're awake. just like addicted, and their marketing's work perfectly, and you're like, yes, I'm an apple man. <laughs> and they're like, yes, you are. <laughs> Where's your credit card? Yeah. <laughs> you never know. Sign over everything. Yeah. Um, but yeah, so it's it's just important to, to just make sure that you are giving yourself opportunity to leverage that, which I guess is kind of what we're saying throughout this entire episode. Over and over, we're just hammering it. it yeah, in. so if you haven't got it yet, <laughs> just let yourself be weird. Yeah. Um, 
but yeah, uh, uh, because that that is where ultimately where the value is gonna gonna lie. Plus, it's your life at the end of the day. Like, if something brings you joy and it, you enjoy it, and it's not yeah. like a destructive to any other person because of your weird behavior, it's more because <laughs> it can be. I'm sure there's aspects yeah. of weirdness that are based on other yeah, people. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I don't know what, you can go quite dark well, on that. Yeah. But at the same time, there's aspects that you just enjoy, things that you enjoy doing, which are positive for you, positive for other people, but you restrict them, whether it is creating art that other people can get a lot of benefits from, but you're holding back because that's a bit too weird, a bit too out there. Mm-hmm. So I do think, yeah, you just have to go go for it and just mm-hmm. turn up, show up as you are. I think you'll end up doing your better work anyway. Yeah. Yeah. And at the end of the day as well, like, well, and I think... At the end of the day, that's yeah. always a conclusion. It's a... It's a frustration that I've talked about many many times we've written a few blog posts about it and stuff like we're now living in a world where everybody's documenting everything right but they're not documenting truthfully like it's not like there's well even in the, even in the tv programs where they've got cameras following them around 24 7 they're still not it's still not real it's still well, not I heard a phrase the other day the curated life that's what social media is doing yes and actually, I, I remember reading an article. Well, it wasn't even an article. It was just a headline. I didn't even get to the article. So like, yeah, I know what I say. <laughs> Millennials. <laughs> yeah. yeah. But it wasn't like a sensationalist thing. But, but the, point, the point stuck with me. Because normally yeah. I will... This wasn't like facts. This was just an opinion. And I was like, yeah, I agree with that. Which was this idea that... Like, we used to have the time capsule thing. Remember the time capsule? Yeah, you you yeah. Like, yeah. yeah. And you used to put like little things from like your lifestyle then so that the idea is that somebody will find it and then they'll see what life see was like the then get you out yeah of right and... well now we don't need time capsules because we've got time hop on facebook right yeah um and we've got all that stuff and just social media it's all collected it's all collected data but the th- and the, the point the headline of the article was in in 200 years time people will think we had perfect lives it's true that's a good point actually and I, they will be like, oh my God, this was like a utopia. It's like having weddings every week. Yeah, yeah. Everybody, yeah. Everybody like, was getting married and having babies. And going on holiday and yeah. like all the time. Like that was how they lived. Did they even work? <laughs> and then they'd see the complaints about Mondays and they'd be like, oh, they only worked on Mondays. They really hate their Mondays. <laughs> <laughs> I wonder what happened on that Monday. <laughs> <laughs> but, and I think that point, that point, stands that's that, a really nice perspective actually. that it's just so we're in, in this world where it's so not real it's so um curated curated yeah and do you know what i think we could just do with a little bit more kind of like this is me this is who i am deal with it well sometimes i'm on the other side that it's just i don't have to show everybody this is who i am but just to those who actually matter yeah <laughs> yeah that's true <laughs> that's true but i just think I don't want to use that word authentic because it's mm. kind of become a buzzword lately. But yeah, just a little less. But I think be authentic for yourself and not for the others. Like True. I don't think you have to True. always think, okay, if I'm authentic, then others are going to see how nice and good I am. It's actually, no, just live the way you are and the things mm-hmm. and the people will come into your life because you're just doing you and it's not about like for other people's pleasure, which I think people think, I'm being so authentic, showing my legs open as the baby flies out. That's not authentic. See, that's like oversharing. <laughs> <laughs> now that's an Instagram quote. <laughs> right there. That was good. I like that. We'll yeah, that. I think we've been up on a tangent anyway. <laughs> but no, what I, what I was going to say, just to kind of close that point off. Close the book. Close the, close the book. Is that I have found, when I've been on social media, the more and more I've been honest, not negative, but honest about who I am. And again, I'm not talking political or anything like that, just me and, and being honest with where I stand on things and, and what I'm interested in, more, in, more to be honest, what I'm interested in. Yeah, what, stop following you. What makes, me, uh, <laughs> what makes me kind of think about things. The more and more I've actually found that I get... I don't really want to use the word, oh, but I was say my reach and my engagement. No, 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 no. I wasn't gonna. No, I wasn't gonna go down. I was. <laughs> I was toying with saying the word support. Yeah. No, I don't mean. But I find that people, people get me more, man. Oh god, here we go. Do you know, like I feel like people now understand so much more about who I am than they ever have before because I've just kind of gone. Do you know what? This is me. 
You take, take it off, or leave take it. Take off the BS filter. Yeah. You're just like... Well, not all the way. Not just all the way. I no, turn no, the BS filter down. Down a couple of notches. <laughs> it's still a little bit of BS. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, so I, I kind of just kind of want... I think that's a good place to kind of start wrapping up. It's just kind of understand that actually the more the more you embrace you the more everyone else will embrace you there we go because if nothing else they'll respect you yeah respect and on that point we'll close this book yeah and we'll say good night even or though good it's morning. even though it's like the morning you know we don't know if people might well be that's true tuning in. if you're tuning in in the morning to be honest this is morning. the point where they've already fallen asleep that's true yeah. They're probably thinking, all right, shut the Sleep phone. Sleep timer went off. Like. <laughs> <laughs> um, so we'll wrap up there. Yes. But most importantly, cultivate that weird side. Be weird. Um, so if you've enjoyed this episode, please do give it a thumbs up on YouTube or leave us a nice iTunes review. Five stars or more would be wonderful. And if you haven't subscribed either on YouTube or iTunes or both, then please hit those subscribe buttons. And... Actually, I think this is another one of those episodes that if you think you know someone that could really benefit from just listening to this conversation, because it is a bit of a candid conversation, <laughs> um, then share it with them. Pass it on. Yeah. Pass it on. Because we want share people... Yeah. We do this because we want people to, you know, maybe rethink the way they... how weird we are. Yeah. Look how weird Gem is. Um, <laughs> um, so thanks very much guys as always and uh, we will catch you next time bye